Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at quadratic inequalities. Quadratic inequalities are just quadratic equations that involve inequalities. Yeah. Okay, so I've chosen for you guys four worked examples that can help us build our confidence on the topic. So let's have a look at the first one. Here it says to solve the inequality, x squared minus 7x plus 12 is less than or equal to 0. So the first thing you want to do here is you want to just make them equal to 0. Factorize and make it equal to 0 and solve it as you would have solved um, normal quadratic equation. If I factorize that, I'm using... Um, Two and three, two, three and four, yeah? Negative three and negative four. Yeah, x minus three, x minus four. And that's that would mean that x would be equal to three and x would be equal to four. Now, we have to, to complete this question. We have to test the boundaries and test the interval, yeah? To complete the question, we have to test the boundaries and test the interval. If I make a little sketch of the graph here, then it may look something like, yeah, this, yeah? So this may be x equals 3 and x equals 4. Uh, to test inside of the boundaries, I may just pick a number inside the boundary between 3 and 4. So <clears throat> let x, so we say let x be equal to 3.5, then 3.5 squared minus 7 times 3.5 plus 12. That's going to give me a negative 0 0.25. And that is less than zero, so check that works. And because it says less than and equal to, I'm going to test these boundaries. So when x equals three, then uh, three squared minus seven times three plus 12 is equal to um, zero. So that works. And if I test 4, 4 squared minus 7 times 4 plus um, 12 is equal to 0. So that works. So our final answer would be that um, 3 is less than or equal to x and x is less than or equal to 4. That's the solution to that problem. Okay, let's have a look at um, the next example. Here it says um, x squared is greater than 8x plus 9. The first thing that I want to do here is to um, transfer all everything to the left-hand side and make them all greater than 0. x squared uh, minus 8x minus 9 is greater than 0. And if we factorize this, we can use 9 and 1. Negative 9 uh, plus 1 is going to give us negative 8. So x minus 9 and x plus 1 equal to 0, which means x equal to 9 and x equal to minus 1. Now we can make a little sketch of that. Then um, this is x. And this is why then it may look something like this yeah we have minus one and nine on the side so now we're going to do our little test inside the interval uh, because we have minus one to nine let me just use something like eight for instance yeah the number eight so let's x be equal to eight then 8 squared minus 8 times 8 minus 9. And we'll check to see if it is greater than 0. 
is equal to minus 9. So that didn't work. It's less than 0. So inside of the interval has failed, has failed the test. So now we're just going to check outside. We're going to check test outside the interval. If we take negative 2, for instance, we say minus 2 squared minus 2, 8 times minus 2 minus 9. That's going to give us um, 11. And that's greater than 0. So check. And on this side, if we take 10, for instance, 10 squared minus 8 times 10 minus 9, that's going to give us um, 11 as well. And that's greater than 0. So because the interval didn't work, we cannot put them together as uh, an inequality with boundaries. We just say that x is less than negative 1 for this side and x is greater than 9 for the other side, the positive side. And that will be our answers for that problem. Uh, for this one, this one says negative x squared minus 9x minus 18 is greater than 0. First thing, um, I want to work out the factors, so I'm going to divide through by minus 1 so that I have a positive coefficient of x. So I'm going to have, if I divide by negative 1, I will have um, x squared plus 9x plus 18 is greater than 0. Yeah? Uh, this just we're using it we're making everything equal to zero and here i can factorize using um three and six so x plus three and x plus six which means x is equal to negative three and x is equal to negative six so i'm just going to put that and uh, mind when I'm making the sketch now, I'll, I'll sketch it um the right way, okay? Because I'm using this one for my sketch. X and Y, so we got negative three and negative six. So if I put that here like that, minus three and minus six. And I want to check inside of the interval. So I'm going to say I'm using this one now to test, to do my test. I'm using the original equation. I'm going to test inside the boundary. Inside the boundary, I choose a number. I choose negative 4. That will be minus minus 4 squared minus 9 times minus 4 eight, minus 18. I want to see if that is greater than 0. So, but that was equal to 36, check, yeah? So we already know that if the inside is correct, the outside will be wrong. So you can make our conclusion here, yeah? We can make our conclusion. Um, minus 6 is less than x, and x is less than, oh, and x is less than minus 3. So it's between this one and that one, yeah? And that will be our solution. Okay, uh, let's have a look at the last one, which is this one. This one, uh, the coefficient of x is not 1. So we have to start by factorizing. Uh, the AC term here is 5 times 2 is 10. And the factors of 10 that we could use to get 7 are 5 add 2. So we can write this as 5x squared plus 5x plus 2x plus 2 is equal to 0. And if we break it into two equal parts and factorize them separately, we have x plus 1 add 2 times x plus 1 equal to 0, which means we have 5x plus 2 times x plus 1 as our factors. And on this side, 5x 
plus 2 is equal to 0. And x would be equal to minus 2 fifths. And on this side, x would be equal to negative 1. So if we try to make a little sketch of this, So we would have everything on this side, maybe something like that. Uh, so this would be negative two fifths and negative one. So if we try to test the boundaries, we can use negative uh, 0 0.5 because this is two fifths. Uh, we can use 0 0.5 or negative a half. So if we put that in five times negative 0 0.5 squared plus 7 times negative 0 0.5 plus 2 uh, that is equal to negative a quarter so that's failed so obviously we're going to have to check those two ends and if you check them by putting numbers beyond those you should get x is less than equal to negative 1 and x is greater than equal to negative 2 fifths yeah so you can check that and uh, because you have the equal sign you have to test the boundaries as well yeah you have to test the boundaries as well so I'm going to end it there. Yeah. You can check the you can check the description box for maybe extra steps of how I finished it off. Um, thank you for watching. I hope this helps. Uh, you have to keep on practicing to become confident in maths. Good luck with all your maths, and I shall see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye. Bye.